next episode, we are going to be taking you to this beautiful, old, and very charming city of Bursa. Now some fun facts about Bursa. Bursa is the fourth largest city in Turkey. It was the old capital of the Ottoman Empire in the 1300s. And it's also surrounded by mountains, including Mount Uludağ, one of the tallest mountains in Turkey. And... And it is the this place, the pioneer of this dish that we are going to try for the very first time. This, we're a little bit hungry. I mean, we're starving, so let's go. You will think that this is a metro station but it's an underground pass and in here there's many stores there's optical store there's shoe store there's clothing stores and Did we get ourselves into this is probably the most gluttonous meal I will ever have in Turkey we're here at the place where this is where it all started this is a great way to start this is our first ever Iskender kebab that is so rich wow it has that tangy taste from a tomato but the butter makes it look creamy. I'm not quite sure why they try it. Why, if only the pioneer is still alive, the inventor of this, I would ask him what made him think this would work so well. all the way to Bursa to try this dish because we wanted to wait to try this Iskender Kebab where it was created and the Iskender Kebab is minced lamb on a spit, roasted on a spit, shaved thinly and some thick slices here. Covered in tomato sauce and then they come to the table and they pour some sheep milk butter on top for the extra sinful topping. Oh man, it looks amazing. That's really interesting. You really get that strong tomato flavor. The butter comes in kind of at the end. It's not as overwhelming, but that meat has a really nice flavor, especially those thick pieces. And you can really taste the flavor from the wood that they use. They actually use wood fire to roast the lamb on the spit, which is pretty incredible. Even on the side here, you have a big dollop of yogurt. Also appreciate the different layers of flavors. You get that smoky, rich slices of lamb meat. You have that zesty tomato sauce, that rich kind of salty sheep's butter, that sour, cool yogurt. And then what's cool is that on the bottom of that, you have this bread that's been soaking up all that sauce and butter. So it's really nice to get these pieces of bread to go underneath it too. This is really a special dish. It's over 154 years old and I see why it's so special, especially when you come here to try it. Amazing. Iskender Kebab is named after the founder, Iskender Effendi. So this is the original place that's trademarked. This is the spot to go to. 800 and a little 150 years. Yes. Very special. side of Bursa is truly giving us that countryside European vibe that 
Iskender kebab was delicious. It may be the most gluttonous meal, but it is so this is so damn delicious that you've got to try it if you are in Bursa. Just control yourself a little bit because it's so good that you may want to order and order and order, but man, that's it. Um, so we just binged out because we knew this is the place to be. This is the birthplace. We went to the original spot, had our fill, probably go on it for a long time after that. So yep. we come back to Bursa one day. <laughs> right. So let's go to the next spot. watching this you know what sumit is but if you don't know what it is it's like a bread it's a shape like a round shaped bread could look like a pretzel but differently um, and it's very good and extra delicious when it's fresh and here in Bursa they also have another version of their bread which this one is bread and there's magic around it which is tahini and, uh... So Summit is probably the most popular street food in Turkey. You'll see it all over the streets. There's always little vendors selling it. But the problem with it is that it's not always fresh. Usually it's not. That's why it's best to come to the source. So we came to a spot here called Abdal Simit Firina. I believe it's, uh, they're making them fresh all day long. You see them with the blocks of dough. They're shaping it into the rings. They're putting them into a kettle boiling, basically. So Summit is more or less like a Turkish bagel. And not like the New York style bagels that maybe you said really thick. This actually reminds me a lot more of a Montreal style bagel. It looks quite similar to this. It's covered in sesame seeds, this beautiful brown color, and it's still warm. Look at that. Look at all the sesame seeds that come dropping off of it. Mm. So the interesting these they're they have a nice chew to them, and I just love the dominant sesame seed flavor. It is just covered in these sesame seeds that are nice and browned from being um, baked in that oven. It's delicious. I love cement, and it pairs perfectly with chai, Turkish tea. Now, as much as I like cement, I am extremely intrigued by this tahanla. It's like a bread covered in tahini. It's just slathered all over it. I have no idea if it's going to be sweet or savory. We've got to dive in. Yeah, it wasn't the best way to do it. Oh yeah, tahini's dropping out. Let's not do that. Mm. Really creamy tahini. A lot of that tahini here. It's so warm. It's kind of gooey. It's a little on the sweeter side, actually. Not that sweet. I do see bits of sugar here. It's like a paste that's kind of been cooked up to a really soft consistency. Really unique. I really enjoy this actually. Mm. Wow. Delicious. I would compare it to peanut butter sandwich with lots of peanut butter. A creamy, a very creamy peanut butter. And if you like or love that, then you will definitely, definitely, definitely 100.1% love this. It has that texture, but only in a tahini spread. Wow, the bread is so soft and fluffy. And then the middle is so thin and just filled with tahini. Oh, it is so good. It is amazing. Delicious. And I feel like it's even better if you pair it with chai. of the episode which is made possible by you where you buy us a coffee we do the walking and mostly the drinking thanks to you down here below for making this even more possible now help us support more local shops like this one by buying us a coffee and more thank you Greece 
or anywhere in general that has Greek community, you are familiar with this type of coffee. This coffee in general, you can only find it in uh, Greek places or in Greece. And it's been two years since the last time we've had it. We've been in Malaysia, we've been in Thailand, and no one serves this particular kind of coffee. We found it here in Bursa, Turkey. And this is Fredo Espresso. Fredo Espresso is one of my favorite coffees in the world, maybe my most favorite. And we were just blown away to find it here in Bursa, Turkey, of all places. It's a spot called Espresso Nest. They actually have a few different types of Greek iced coffees. Fredo Espresso, Fredo Cappuccino, Frappe. We were shocked to find it here. It blew me away after so long not having it. So what it is, it's a it's espresso, then it's mixed with ice, and then it's blended. So they put it in a blender and it gets this beautiful thick foam. And we asked for it no sugar. So you can really taste the coffee. Let's try some. This takes me to a happy place, I tell you. It's really smooth, not overly bitter. I love that foam. That blending to give it that foam is wonderful. This is a perfect hot weather coffee like today. I can even drink this in the winter. That's how much I like it. So uh, if you love coffee, if you love espresso, and you know or you have a Greek community in your neighborhood or in your area, go there, ask for Fredo Espresso, they will love you. heading to our next stop which is right there having an escalator coming going up then walking is a big touch it saves you time and energy. A little bit high, we're in the middle ground, but our goal is to get up there. So we are here at Topane Park. Thing is, it's a, it's a. It's a little bit high on the ground, but not too bad though. Not too bad because there's an escalator that lifts you up. <laughs> oh, there's a nice breeze up here too. And uh, this is a tomb. That's a tomb behind us. Some and of the really cool things in this park, including the star of the show, which we're going to show you in a minute. And yeah, which is right in front of us. People are hanging out, getting some fresh air, and uh, let's go to that park. of the old teleferic, the cable cars that actually go all the way up to Mount Uludad. They actually have renovated over the years. We're not going to go on this trip because we feel this is something that would be better experienced in the winter time with all the snow. We're actually right in the middle of summer, it's hot, we're not going to get the views that you can get. And that's the thing about this city, you could definitely tell it has a certain charm in the winter time. We'll probably have to come back for that, even if we don't like winter at all. That's saying a lot about this city. This view is insane. I mean, you kind of like have the a 180 degrees view of entire Bursa city. From here, you can totally see that this city is in the middle of a mountain. And also what's nice is that you're here and you hang out and you have your coffee or you have your chai right in the middle of there's little coffee shops or cafes here very chill relaxed vibe here but you can just enjoy the view of the entire city of bursa coming up here we cheated on our way up here now on our way back down there we're taking the steps pleasant steps <laughs> 
<laughs> downhill steps. <laughs> it's not bad. It's very steep. You know, you see that? And we were there. <laughs> so that's why we cheated. Behind me is the Grand Mosque. It's grand from the outside. We haven't been inside, but the outside, it's very grand. It's so big, and apparently it has 20 domes. Two, zero. It was built a long time ago. So it was built in 1399. And actually, there's a sign in here, and let this sign do the talking. right behind me dates back to 15th century it's been of course it's been through many 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 changes over the years right now it has the school shops that I can't imagine during winter time and snow is falling it's kind of like it has that European Christmas village vibe and that little stretch and also some shops sell orange juice or teas like a tea shop, uh, cafe you can sit and just enjoy the view but this view behind me right now it's summertime so there's no water but during winter it is filled we've seen photos it is filled with snow and uh, a different different vibe We've learned and read so far that there's plenty of tombs around Bursa. This one in particular, in general. This one's called the Green Tomb. It's for Sultan Mehmed from the Ottoman Empire. This was built in 1421, 600 years to the date. Why do they call it the Green Tomb? It's all because of the green, intricate details Stunning. in the area. Stunning. I love the color. It's beautiful. The ceramics they used, imagine six, over 600 years ago, they built this and inside are the tombs of Sultan Mehmed, Chilibesi Mehmed, number one, and his family. Wow, this is grandiosity. Hmm. It's amazing. A green mosque and we're going to take you there I don't think we can go inside but we're gonna take you there and it's also very grand from the outside so if you find yourself if you want to come to Bursa definitely go check out some tombs or mosques 
to be tom tombed out, but <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely worth visit because they're beautiful and exquisite and very, very intricate. Now, it's late in the day and it's time to get some snacks. Yes. As much as I love Turkish desserts like baklava, Turkish delight, I just can't get enough of dondurma, the Turkish ice cream. I mean, look at that texture, it's just so stretchy. This spot, Baro Dandurma, is just right up the block from the Green Tomb and Green Mosque. We got two flavors here, peach and we have the sakis, it's the mastic. Mm. The mastic is just perfect. The sakis has really got that piney flavor and it's supposed to be good for digestion. It's really light, not too sweet, but the texture is really king in this ice cream. It's just it's perfectly chewy. Now, maybe eating a lot of ice cream just because it's summertime, but I can definitely eat this a lot in the winter, no problem, because it's also not as cold as other ice creams are. All right, so ice cream is so chewy that you can just chew it. Yeah. <laughs> And I guess this video episode ends right here <laughs> because we are in need. We're gonna need some concentration. This is really cool. We just stumbled on this like outdoor arcade randomly, just looking for coffee one day. They have foosball tables, air hockey, the, the box punching thing. I don't know what you call it, but like the punching thing, the all those machines. It's so cool. All it takes two lira coins, and you can play for hours. That's what we've been doing. Just bringing back some childhood. Fun excitement. If you like arcade, you just come to this spot over here. It's outside. Uh, look for Yaltun Cafe right by the Iskender Kebab Shop, right around the corner. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people come here to play, but it's earlier in the night, and um, so we're going to play. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoy it, and see you in the next one.